G'day all, Matt Roberts here. Let's talk about Scope. So we've got a very simple example of a processing program that uses Scope, exercises it in some way. Uh, we don't need this down here, but we'll extend, we don't need the console here. I'll just maybe be able to get rid of it in case, no, nope, it all fits on the screen, so that's good. I've got the debugger open on the left here, but ignore it for now because we're in the middle, that was in the middle of the last execution. Um, this is a program that wants to, well actually let's turn the debugger off. This is a program that wants to animate a shape across the screen and animate a shadow of the same shape peering down on the bottom of the screen. There are many ways to do that and this program just happens to do it this way. It does it by introducing a, um, two other functions, one that will draw the UFO at a position and one that will draw the reflection at a position. And the UFO one fills it with a kind of magenta color and then draws an ellipse up the top of the screen and the reflection fills it with a black color and draws it down the bottom of the screen. Interesting thing is both these functions need to know where they're going to draw that shape. So they both take a single parameter telling it the x position of the shape. But also because we're animating that position across both of them, we need a global variable representing the x position of the shapes, both shapes. So that x position up here um, is a variable getting incremented so that it animates across the screen and we're using it to draw the UFO and we're using it to draw the reflection. The particular characteristic of this program is that this variable name here, xpos, is the same as the variable names here and here. And what we want to understand is that every time you see something that looks like a variable declaration, int pos x, that's definitely a variable declaration. Here's another one, int pos x looks just like a variable declaration. And yet another one, that yes, every one of these does cause a variable to be created and a slot in memory to be set aside for that variable. Even though these are here in the formal parameter position, they are in fact exactly the same as variable declarations. So we're going to try and have a bit of a look inside the memory while it's running via the debugger. Let's try and show you what I mean. So the debugger is set with a breakpoint here on the first call to background, which is why it's stopped before it's drawn anything. And you can see that there's a single variable called xpos that has a value of 0. That's exactly what I expect because I declared a variable of xpos up here. The code's run through this section, it's run through this section, so it's set it to 0 and we're here. Now if I step, just the one step, I'm now down to the call to UFO at. And that, so nothing's been drawn yet, or the background might have been drawn, but it looks like it's struggling. Ah, oh, that's right. Nothing will get drawn on the screen until a full uh, draw loop has run. So this is the UFO at call, and we're passing in as an actual parameter that xpos, which will be the value 0. Mm -hmm. Now that's going to cause the code to jump down here to this function and run this function definition. And you can see in the function definition is a declaration. So as soon as processing does that, it gets past that declaration, which means it creates another slot in memory, and it's done that up here. So there are now two slots in memory, both called xpos. Now the debugger's been nice to us here because it's added this little magic this on the front to help us see that one of them is the new one versus the old one. But we can't really rely on that. That's a kind of internals of processing thing. In reality, and from our point of view, we've got two entirely separate variables both called xpos. And that creates potentially a problem because in this line here, the very next line of the code, we say, please look up the memory slot xpos and find out what's in there. Well, which xpos? There are two of them. And the scoping rules will tell us which xpos. The other thing to realize about scoping, which we'll see in this example, is that if I step again, it's going to go through the rest of the UFO app and back out into draw. So the ellipse call gets called. Step again. Now we're back out of that UFO call and one of the XPOS went away. Just gone. So that's also a consequence of the scoping rules that we'll be talking about. The fact that variables have a life and that life uh, is finite. So one of those XPOS that we created has gone away again. And what we'll see if we keep tracing is that when we get to reflection at, it introduces yet another xpos because we've gone through another declaration step. And again, it's got a little trick that we can use to work out which is which, but internal details, so we can't rely on it. And again, that one, poof, disappears when we come back out. Uh, the other one's hanging around. 
and we're getting our drawing happening. But this question of when I've got two variables that have the same name, two slots in memory that have the same name, and then I try and access a memory slot with that name, which memory slot will I get? We ask our scoping rules, and our scoping rules tell us. So I guess we better find out how scoping rules work.